think. Our next speaker will be Jose Pericuas Guerra from the University of Indigenous uh, And the title of the talk is Quick uh, and Continued Time Evanescent Random Walks. So uh, thanks a lot. Um, go ahead, uh, Jose. OK, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Hmm. Uh, do you see my screen now? Not yet. Or, or not yet? Not yet. Okay. Oh. Uh, now do you see it? No. No, 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 it's... Yeah, now it's working, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so the title of my talk is Discrete and Continuous Time Evanescent and Random Walks. Uh, my full name is Jose Perico Esguerra, but you can call me Perry, P-E-R-R-Y. Okay, so I'm from the theoretical physics group of the National Institute of Physics. It's the physics department of the main campus of the University of the Philippines. As of uh, early this year, there were five PhD faculty in the uh, my, in this talk, I only have two key points. The first point is there are contexts where death or mortality or evanescence of random walkers or diffusers play a major role. And the second point is many methods used to analyze systems involving immortal walkers can be modified so that they can be used to describe systems invo involving mortal or evanescent random walkers. Okay, so the key feature of, uh, of a mortal random walk or an, or, an or an evanescent random walk is finite walker lifetime. Okay, in the traditional random walks we teach, there is an implicit assumption that these random walkers live forever. Uh, but in reality, there are contexts wherein we have to consider a finite lifetime of a random walker. And this include photon migration in tur turbid biological media, detachment of molecular proteins from their, their polymer tracts, uh, walker subject to radioactive decay, walker subject to photon decay, luminescence qu quenching, photon scattering and light absorption in tissues, scavenging reactions, stochastically moving prey hunted by a collection of, of predators, and target problems with mortal traps. Okay, now uh, random walks can be discrete time random walks. You can you have you can have continuous time random walks. Now, in the case of evanescent random walkers, one can uh, make further subcategories. Okay, there are so-called step coupled continuous time random walks, uh, continuous time evanescent random walks, and there are step independent continuous time evanescent random walks. In step coupled random walks, that can only occur at the moment of stepping. For example, you can have walkers that have a finite probability of being absorbed or converted into an inert species by the substrate every time they step from one side to another. Uh, as for the step independent evanescent random walker, the most obvious uh, example will be the radioactive decay of a diffusing isotope. So um, these isotopes can uh, die, quote unquote, at any moment. So that's my first point. So my next point is many methods used to analyze systems involving immortal walkers can be modified so that they can be used to describe systems involving mortal or evanescent random walkers. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll only discuss one example. Specifically, I'll discuss work done with uh, an undergraduate student. Uh, um, so the goal was to uh, solve some problems involving mortal bias continuous time random walks. 
But in order to arrive at results for mortal, biased, continuous time, random walks, we had to start with the traditional, with the classic right, uh, random walk of, or uh, retro, uh, which we call immortal, biased, uh, dis uh, discrete time random walk. And then we, uh, we have to account for uh, the finite life lifetime. So that's why we have to deal with mortal bias, random walk, discrete time random walk. And then we have to account for the fact that and then we have to account for the fact that um, the time that the time between steps need not be a constant. So first, let me go through the immortal discrete time random walk in de in some detail. Okay, so we wish to calculate the following: the average number of visited sites as a function of time, uh, the time-dependent return probability the eventual return probability, and the conditional mean return time. OK, um, so here's the notation. We have a bias parameter x. And so what, what that means is the probability of stepping to the right is r equals 1 plus x divided by 2. The probability of stepping to the left is 1 minus x divided by 2. And then we have some pretty standard notation for, for the probability of finding a walker at site S at time N, given that it was at site S prime at time M. And then we have the notation for the probability that a random walker that starts at site S0 at time 0 reaches site S for the first time at step S. And this is the first passage probability. And then we have delta n, which is the expected number of new sites visited on the nth step. Sn is the expected number of sites, of distinct sites visited by the nth step. So one can think of Sn as the sum of delta 0 plus delta 1 plus delta 2 up to delta n. Then you have R2n, the probability that the random walker returns for the first time to the origin at step 2n. Script R, the eventual return probability, and big D, the conditional mean return time. We use generating function methods. So here, C is some sort of a bookkeeping parameter. And we can, and here we have the generating function for the expected number of distinct sites visited. Okay, and, and all the information for step zero, step one, step two, step n, is summarized in this function. Now, now Sn is just the sum of the delta j's. So again, delta j is the expected number of new sites visited on the j step. Okay, so we can manipulate this uh, so that we can rewrite this expression for the generating function for the expected number of sites visited in terms of uh, delta J. Now, how do you calculate the expected number of new sites visited at step J? Well, it turns out that it's possible to calculate the first pass. It's possible to calculate the first passage probabilities. If you sum over all the first passage probabilities on the end step, then you get delta n. And by convention, delta 0 is 1. There's, and what that means is we can get a generating function for the average number of new sites visited and express it in terms of the generating function for uh, the first passage time, summed over all sites. OK. Now, for a homogeneous random walk, it turns out that there's a relation between the generating function for the first passage probability and the generating function for the occupation probability. OK. Now, if we combine all the insights we had from the four previous slides, it will turn out that one can express the generating function for the um, 
number of this for the expected number of districts sites visited in terms of um uh the generating function for the occupation probability okay now the probability of return uh, there's a, 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 a generating function associated with the probability of returning and this is the p of zero c over here and this allows us to get the generating function for the expected number of distinct sites visited and sorry jose sorry one can uh, yes you, go could, ahead could you press hide on this uh, 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 this thing that you have on the bottom uh, yeah so we can see all the screen yeah okay Exactly. Okay. Sorry. Perfect. Now, is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Yes, because yes. We could, we now, could, so yeah. from the generating. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you could. Can, can you go back? Yes. To, okay. Another one. Another back. back. Okay. Yes. Back. Another one back. back. Yeah, here, here. Because we couldn't see the formula in red. Yeah, the next one. Okay. Next? The next one. Yeah. Uh, Next. One more. Okay. One more. Yeah, this one. Yeah. This formula was. Yes. Is the, is the, uh, the this previous. was. Uh, the previous one. The formula in red. Or you want no. to return to the previous slide? Is the previous slide. Is oh. the formula. Oh, yes. In that one. That one. Yes. That one. So, so, yes. So this is the generating. So this is the. Gen, so this. It turns out that. So this is the generating function for the expected number of distinct sites visited by time by step n so if you so in principle if you take the taylor series expansion of this you can and take the coefficients of c to the n you get sn okay so after this what we can do is we consider a specific random walk so for example i consider the biased random walk and i look for the probability and i look for the so it's possible to calculate the probability that it will return to the origin on the end step okay this is a sim this is a simple uh, binomial distribution we get the generating function by multiplying everything by c to the 2 n and take the sum and you eventually get at this expression for the occupy for the return probability for the, for the generating function of the return probability now you substitute this so this p s0 s0 c is the p0 c over here and we substitute and this and we end up with an expression for the generating function for the survival uh, for the number of distinct sites visited so if we expand this in powers of C and read off the coefficients, we get uh, the expected number of sites visited after one step, which is, of course, true because at the zeroth step, uh, it was at the origin. At the first step, it could have gone to the right or to the left. So you have S1 equals 2. OK, and then you, and then you can calculate uh, specific values for let's say this is the expected number of distinct sites visited by the seventh step so take note that if there is no bias all you get is this constant say 35 over 8 65 over 6 the effect of bias is captured in the x squared x to the fourth and x to the six terms Okay, so it's possible to calculate the first return uh, probabilities. And Jose, uh, um, uh, just one yes, story. we have just passed the the uh, eleven minutes. So try to wrap up. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's the first return probability, and okay. So for the 
immortal discrete time random walks, we have an expression for the eventual return probability, it's that one, and for the conditional mean, return time. Now, for the biased evanescent discrete time random walk, the parameters are very similar except that there's an asterisk to denote the evanescent uh, quantities. And the main and the main feature is to relate the evanescent quantities to the immortal quantities. So rho of n is the number of surviving walkers by step n. Rho of zero is the initial number of walkers. So you can uh, put everything there and you can get an expression for the eventual return probability and the conditional mean return time. And it turns out that you can also get an expression for the generating function for the number of visited sites. Now, where you have an exponential decay of the number of random walkers. So, okay, you follow very similar steps and eventually uh, you end up with this expression for the generating function of the um, expected number of statistic sites visited. That's a generating function and you get these expressions for the expected number of sites visited, say by the fifth step, fourth step, and so on. We can still calculate the first return probabilities and the conditional mean return time. Now, if we want to convert that discrete time random walk into a continuous time random walk, um, what we have to do is to calculate the probability that the walker stepped exactly n times by time t. And we get the Laplace transform of that, and we can get the average number of sites visited by time t uh, as some sort of, um, of a weighted average. We take the Laplace transform of this, and eventually what this says is you have almost exactly the same formula as for the discrete evanescent discrete time random walk, but every time you see C, you replace it with the Laplace transform uh, psi squiggle of u. Okay, and eventually we get this formula for the Laplace transform, and we get the probability for an evanescent CTRW to return to its starting point at time t. And we can calculate the eventual return probability and the conditional mean return time. If we consider an exponential waiting time distribution, it's possible to get these explicit expressions for uh, the expected number of sites visited by time t and uh, what we expect uh, as t approaches infinity. We can calculate the eventual return probability so what we have done is to show that it's possible to calculate quantities such as the average number of visited sites, eventual return probability, and conditional mean return time with just uh, a little addition to the manipulations for the classic random walks. Uh, we have done some other related work uh, within the group uh, dealing with evanescent random walks. And these are the next steps. Uh, okay, we have an idea how to do the next steps. We don't have any idea how to do this next, next steps. So thank you very much for listening. Thanks a lot, Jose, for this uh, very interesting talk. Uh, so we have uh, um, uh, minutes, four minutes for question. So okay. uh, I have a, uh, Aure yeah. can I, uh, Aurel? Of can course, I? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, Perry, thanks for your talk. Uh, do you have, uh, are there, is there any experimental data or observations that um, you can use your models to sort of to validate and to fit to? Well, I, okay, I think in my second or third slide, I mentioned uh, uh, connections to uh, say, uh, connections to the diffusion of say, uh, radioactive uh, isotopes and so on but uh, uh, but I don't have data now 
but uh, but the but but there's but but the original motivation for evanescent random walks is um, um, you know um, is uh, uh, chemical re- is chemical reactions where uh, as, as long as you have something that as long as you have some of the something that's diffusing and part of it disappears potentially you can use this uh, evanescent random walk as a framework so so it uh, it's been shown to work for uh, to fit experimental data well i guess is where i was asking. Oh, yeah well i think that was the origin that was the original well it i think that was the original context and now we're trying to uh make it abstract and uh, tr- try to see. see what happens if we cons- if we look at things in the discrete space setting i see okay thanks okay uh, there's any more questions well i i have a question um okay that because i uh, i'm not familiar with the with the field uh, i'm from completely other field but something uh, uh, i'm curious about is uh, what was what is the part that was known before uh, before your uh, uh, investigation i mean what part of of of, of this uh, uh, well i think that, um yeah well i think the symmetric case was dealt with already and uh, in and in this example what we did was to consider the effect of uh bias uh in the random walk and uh, mm-hmm. of course uh the main difference between a biased and an unbiased random walk is um so an an unbiased random walk a bias a random walk that's that bias is expected to return eventually uh to the origin a random walk that's biased is not expect uh is not always expect this does not has a probability less than one of eventually returning to the origin and you will expect qualitatively different uh Okay, and additionally, if you if we talk about uh, the unbiased random walk, okay, the, the average return time turns out to be infinite. For the in the case of the uh, biased random walks, okay, of course, the average is infinite because some uh, because some of the walkers will never return, right? But if we consider the, if we consider only a conditional average, meaning we average only over all those uh, random walkers that eventually return, you get a finite value. And okay, so that's what. So 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 what we did in addition to that is okay, uh, we studied what how things will turn out uh, to be different if we consider the in addition the fact that um that uh, the random walkers can die before they manage to return i see so, well, okay so th- thanks a lot uh, it was an interesting okay. and i give you an applause in the name of everyone okay thank you very much thank you so we now okay. move to our next next